Can you speak to God in your own way tonight? Just in the next five minutes, just talk to God. Thank you so much, Oestri. Just talk to God in your own language. You can't allow such an atmosphere to go without transactions before God. Can you enter decisions with God tonight and tell God, meet me again? Let him hear your voice. Tell him the things that are pressing on your heart. There is nothing that bothers you that God feels is not necessary. <laughs> Even if it's a singlet you need, it's something you feel like eating. The things that are on your heart, can you talk to God about them?
in the name of Jesus. I want us to raise a simple prayer before we advance. And this is it. Oh God, any long battle that has kept itself around my life concluded today. Can you make that prayer? Conclude the battles that have hung around my life till today. Conclude it. Finish it. Put an end to it. Put an end to it. Put an end to it. Let there be total, complete victory. Let there be complete victory. Let there be complete victory. Let the manifestations of the victory be strong with me. Let it be strong. Let it be strong. Let it be strong. Let it be strong. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, listen. Yesterday we prayed for children. You remember? Please, between now and Sunday, I need, I need to be reminded, that's what I'm saying. This. Between now and Sunday, if God shows you anything about your child that you didn't understand or you didn't like, please reach out to me. Are we together? Do what? Just reach out to me so that we'll talk about it. Hallelujah. I know God is doing something massive already. He's doing something great. Can we appreciate God before we advance? Just thank him. Thank him in a minute. Thank him in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost fire, burn everywhere. Oh, oh fire, Holy Ghost fire, burn. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost fire, burn everywhere. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost fire, burn. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost fire, burn. Everywhere, oh, oh fire, holy ghost fire, oh, oh fire, holy ghost fire, burn everywhere. God and Father, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word. We ask that it will come with power and it will fulfill the purpose for which it is sent in our lives and beyond us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for helping us thus far. We ask that you take the glory of all the things you have done and that you carry us further. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you have your seat in God's presence? We've been looking at spiritual things and we'll be pressing further today. And um, where we got caught up yesterday was that Jesus had given a mandate to his disciples and told them to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. And for them to be able to become witnesses 
he decided that he, they needed to tarry so that they would be endued with power. It was in that tarrying to endure with power that we saw that power is a major means of demonstration by the Spirit of God. Such that if that demonstration finds anything that is anti-Christ in the place where it is being administered, power will begin to enforce the demonstration. So if God decides he wants to use someone as a vessel, and he finds out that there's a legion of angels, of demons, sorry in the man, he will use power to enforce the demons out because that man needs to preach for him in ten cities. So power becomes a necessity. And um, we saw yesterday that fasting and prayers were part of the major things that propel the matter of power. A certain time, certain people brought a child that was possessed by demons and gave them to the disciples of Jesus and told them to cast the disciples out but the disciples could not until Jesus came and Jesus cast out the, the demon and then he told the disciples he said the disciples said to him and said why couldn't we cast out this demon so he now told them what we learned yesterday he said this other kind of demon no, you will have to do prayer and fasting so you see where fasting is to cast out it, that scripture is a proof that the disciples were already casting out demons because they told Jesus, why couldn't we cast this one out? And it would have been something that was known that they could cast out demons because when the Pharisees came, they didn't take the child to Jesus. They took the child to the disciples knowing that they could do it. But you see, the fasting measure of the, Jesus' disciples was not there. You remember Jesus' disciples? They were eating because the bridegroom when you keep eating because you have a pastor that is fasting and praying for you, a day may. Uh huh. That's what I'm saying. And, and Jesus one day supported this. I said, Don't leave them. The bridegroom's around. But when the bridegroom has gone and they cannot cast the demon, the demon will be left with them there. So fasting is necessary. Don't, don't be a fasting contractor. I, I've heard of that. There are prayer contractors. You give people money and they pray for you and then you. Give people money and they fast for you. People can pray for you. You can get people to pray for you. You can get people to join you in fasting. But do not relinquish your life to people's activity with God. Don't come to a point where your security and your essence of operation is based on somebody hidden somewhere. I have a spiritual father. I have a pastor. I have a friend. I have a wife. I have a mother that is praying for me. Well, she will not live forever. That, that's the funny thing about that. Young boy. I'm saying this. Somebody was sharing with me. She has a friend. And the friend lives a very wayward life. A very what? She follows man to man, married and unmarried. And when things are going bad, she will tell this, my daughter. Say, don't worry. My mother is praying for me. My mother's prayer can cover for me. And her mother's prayer has been covering for her. She's married now. She has a child. They live good financially. Are you getting me? And I told her, my daughter. You see the way she's bragging about her mother praying for her. See, her children are coming. Wait and see what her children will do to her. Because she's wasting the savings that her mother did, but she's not keeping savings for her children. That's wickedness. The way you are happy that your mother prayed for you, your children were supposed to come. The Bible says that a wise man leaves inheritance for his children. Children. I gave an example yesterday when I was using what AY did. I said he can come, he can pass down that heritage to his child. That's the real thing you give your children, not houses. As at the time my dad built his house before he passed on. The house was one, it was talk in, talk in town. Talk of the town. Do you understand? It was what? Talk, that house was the talk of town. Maybe after service you can follow my mother to the house now. When you see the house, even me, I didn't want to marry and stay in the house. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's just like 20 years he passed on. That, you don't want the, you don't want it. So that thing you are gathering as money as something to give your children, they will not want it. Just give them five years. It becomes, but if you can get 
real thing. What this woman has, she's not a woman because she's married with a child. She has real heritage. Her mother's prayer is this. Is, uh, uh, but the mother will go. Then when the credit load has finished, her daughter will now wake up one day, God forbid, and slap her mother in a quarrel. Ah, you slapped me. I didn't slap my mother. Which kind of child are you? What did you keep to protect the child? Do you understand? You, you had no essence to, to pass across. No heritage. No testimony. Because she was using it to intimidate my daughter that you are wasting your time praying. Me, somebody is praying for me. Look at me. And her life physically looks better than my daughter's. I told my daughter, I said, your parents didn't keep that deposit for you. You are the one that is starting it. Start. You, you, at least she's a proof that if you do it right, your children will rest. It's unfair to give back to children and leave them like that. You should be able to give them something. At, at least for bringing them into this country called Nigeria and this world that is wasting like this. You should have something, a security system in God that you can bequeath to them. Not your account balance. No, not your account balance. Because if God is not giving to them, they will become like fools. And the Bible says, do not give money to a fool. That your money will be what will destroy them. What I'm saying is that have enough to pass across. So Jesus was able to attend the matters of prayer and fasting. There are two more matters about power. Can you help me with that same scripture? Luke chapter 4. Luke 4, 1 to 2. Luke 4, 1 to 2. It was a scripture of the temptation. And Jesus, being full of the Holy, Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness too. This was the reason. Being 40 days what? Tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. This is where we pick fasting from. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. Stay there. He was being what? Tempted of the devil. The third thing, if you want to sustain the posture of power in your vessel, is holiness. He was tempted 40 days, but he fought. God will forgive you any sin you sin except the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. That's what Jesus said. He will forgive you any sin that you sin against him. So the problem is not that you will not be forgiven. The problem is that every time you fall into sin, the capacity of power is drained. You will be forgiven, but what will happen to the power? Do you remember, uh, what was his name? When he lost his consecration, Samson. The Bible says he stood up as at other time and shook himself, but he was still Samson, still an Israelite. God still loved him. In short, when he prayed, God brought back the hair. But at that moment, the power, the ability to bring about result was gone. Because there are, there are gospels that make world now. Just In short, someone was discussing with me some years back. He said, even if you sin, you don't need to ask God for forgiveness. A minister will. They don't need to ask God for forgiveness because God has already forgiven you and blah, blah, blah. You see, that thing will make you not see the, the real effect of sin. You think that God doesn't have, has a problem forgiving you. Forgiveness was secured on the cross about 2,000 years ago. The reason he's telling you do not sin is that part of what keeps your vessel with power is holiness. Our fathers in the faith, are you hearing me? Our fathers, the missionaries and the rest... It was not as if they prayed as much as we are praying. Some of those missionaries. Mm -mm. But there was an upright living that they were able to secure that the idols of our fathers that are now manipulating us inside church could not manipulate them. Think about it. That idol that is dealing with people now in your village, there was a missionary that walked in there, lived there, a white man, and one souls, and the, the demon couldn't kill him, couldn't do anything. He that breaks the hedge, the serpent. So the serpent becomes helpless when the hedge is not broken. He, he will be there, but he can't do anything. So the more we walk in holiness, are you getting me? The more we can sustain power. This was the, the picture God gave me years back about holiness. 
He says it's like a gallon. If you pray, you sustain power. Let's say the water is power. Sin is sin, but not all sin are the same. Some sin will puncture the gallon up just by the side, small. And, and there will be water, but water will be leaking. Then after three days, the water, instead of 20 liters, will remain 15 liters. Some sin used to puncture gallon from under. You may be angry and say something wrong and it will just puncture by the side and you will lose only one liter. One liter. But by the time you go into fornication, adultery, or you meet the uncle of them, our brother raised the matter, pride. Pride used to puncture gallon from under. Even if you are a, a cherubim in heaven, when pride punctures you, you will, you will not be Lucifer again. It, it, it removes everything. It, it's the one that can turn the king that rules on earth, the whole known earth, and make him a beast. He, he begins to eat grasses like an animal. That one does not puncture side. Maybe you should read the book Final Quest by um, Rick Joyner. That by the time you have won almost all your battles, the devil will not tell you, great man. The one that does not lie, does not cheat, does not fornicate, does not commit adultery. The one that can control his temper. Then all of a sudden, you now miss the ogakpatakpata of them. The one that is now like this. That's the one the Pharisees had. The one that punctures from wonder. Do everything in your power to live a holy life. Everything you can do, just, just do. And in case you make any mistakes, stand up, quick, dust yourself, roll to Jehovah. I, can't, I need to help somebody here. Satan is wicked. When a man falls, he, he tells the man that God cannot do anything. It's a lie. God can fix you. Run quickly, quickly. One of the reasons we have the Holy Ghost is that he convicts the world of sin. So the moment there is sin, he, he shows his displeasure. To the intent you will fix, you will patch it quickly. And then things become better again. If not, you pray for 10 hours, gather power in your vessel. Then you go and throw it away. Lying, cheating, stealing, fornicating. Holiness, holiness, holiness is key to power. That's what I've listened to some fathers of the faith. If you listen to the boy's messages, that's one of the key pillars of his message, holiness. If you listen to Daddy Kumui, that's one of the key pillars of his message is holiness. And I have watched Daddy Kumui and I heard the story of when he went, was it in Kaduna? And then after preaching, he got to a point and stopped and then he looked at the congregation and he said, God, I know you and you know me. Therefore, let the miracles begin to happen. Then he went and sat down. Nobody was on the altar. Cripples were moving. When you study such men, one of the things you will find that keeps them in such capacity of power is holiness. In short, the Bible says the righteous will be as bold. So when God puts a testimony in your heart, if you walk in holiness, there's a boldness you have to execute it. Do everything you can to be holy. And while you do that, should you find an infirmity, run and stick to the altar with God until that infirmity loses its power. Are we together? Uh -huh. The fourth one, which I want to stay on is Acts chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. I want to pick the word from the scripture. Acts 1 12 to 14. Do I have the scripture? Okay. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey, 13. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and 
Matthew and James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zealots and Judas the brother of James. So they are listed them. And they all continued with what? One accord. So the prayer we looked at yesterday was on a platform of one accord. That when they were going to posture for power, we are still dealing with demonstration of power. When they were going to posture so that God can give them power, one of the things they had to do is one accord. So, can I still use that my example of uh, a? I still want to use that example. So, you see that song he came and sang here. If he sang it alone, he will never have gotten that impact that was here. There's something about unity when it comes to power. When people are united, even in doing wrong, they do it well. God said that these guys are one language. If we leave them, they will build a city up to heaven. Therefore, let us change their language. Not today. Maybe the day I want to talk about unity. You will think that all they changed was language. But you need to understand something about language. Language is it's not just the thing you are speaking. It is a binding force in the spirit. Language is a binding force. That's why when you come into the body of Christ, one of the things that the Holy Ghost does is that he gives you a new language. Because the moment you start speaking that language, that tongue that is of the spirit, you become bound with every other believer that speaks that language. So when a demon wants to bind a person with himself, the demon gives the person a language. It's called enchantment, incantation. When the man begins to speak that language, they bind. They become like joined together. But there's an example I want to use for us about unity. Who watched Voltron as a child? Voltron. Cartoon. Okay. Ah, we are. All right, you watch Voltron. Okay. Beautiful. Voltron, the, you put that don't watch cartoons and didn't have, don't, have, don't watch TV, you are welcome. You will listen to us today carefully. My wife is staring at me. I know that Voltron will be far from you. Voltron. Voltron was a cartoon where, I think there were five. Five. They have something like that now again. I don't know. This new generation. No. They were like five robots that look like lions. Am I right? Uh -huh. So each of those guys were heroes and they would enter into those robots and then they would be fighting, destroying the bad people. Oh, then you say, I'm the blue one, I'm the red one, I'm this one and so on. That was how it was and truth, it was wonderful. But when Voltron went, every one of them had different names. I've forgotten their names now. But when they meet an enemy that they cannot handle all of them, they will now fuse into each other and become one. So one will be the head, one will be hand, one will be hand, one will be leg, one will be leg. That full one they made is what is called Voltron. That big one is stronger than every one of them as long as they are not made one. If you have not watched Voltron before, wave your hand. Now, the explanation I gave you about Voltron now, does it make sense? Okay. Ah. I don't know that this movie got something like that. Um, Transformers. Yeah, but Transformer is only one one. Are you getting me? Eh? Power Rangers. Yes. My, my son used to shout. He said, I'm the red one. I'm the blue one. Power Rangers. Who has watched Power Rangers? <laughs> Kai, what a generation. That means my white beard is, is true. It's true. It's not. It's not. It's true. I, I was looking at them one one and I was wondering where they are coming from. Now I know that it is true. Power, so it's like Power Rangers. But I don't understand Power Rangers very well. But I know it makes sense. No. When, they all, when five of them are fighting one entity, the entity will be dealing with them. Then all of a sudden, they fuse and become one. The moment they become one, it's still the same five people, but what they now generate as power is superior 
to five of them as entities. The disciples understood this thing that the only human being that could contain God in his fullness is Jesus. Jesus does not need you or me to do anything that God can do. But there is something God can do and I can't do it. I will need somebody else to join me. Then somebody else will join. Somebody else will join and join and join. Then when we reach five of us, then God will be able to do that thing. If five of us are separated, if five of us are here, and this one is praying for his family, that one is praying for his business, this one is praying for that, that one is praying for that, God won't be able to do it. But the moment all of us now agree, we want to pray for this. They were in one accord. The prayer point was only one thing. And do us with power. Can you imagine if every one of us here now shut down and the only thing we pray for is power for the next two hours but we will download matters some of you the battles in your life will be answered without you saying anything that power when it you know when they form power rangers or voltron one leg will just land boom and the striking of that leg can scatter something they didn't even plan to scatter it all but the, the leg size will scatter that thing as it's going some of the problem in your family, the reason you can't fix it is that the amount of energy needed by God to supply relief to that your situation, you, your vessel can't carry it. While I was in um, the youth service, there was this day. I, I don't know whether to say that was the first day, but that was the day I became that conscious that God clothed me. It's in the book of, I think, 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 5. That will be clothed with a new tabernacle. We were praying and glory, glory wrapped me. Kai. Never felt that way before. I couldn't sing. I couldn't do anything. It was so sweet. And so powerful. But after like five minutes or so, I don't know that it was up to five minutes, it lifted. I began to beg God in church, bring it back. He said, no. I said, God, bring it. He said, no. Why won't you give me, say, if I leave it on you like this, you will die. Now, believe God. So I, I kept quiet. When service closed, we went to enter bus, joyful bus. To go back to the house as i entered the car I was in the front seat by the passenger side somebody walked up to me and looked at my face and said "Chude, what is wrong i said nothing what is up? he said you are looking old suddenly you are old then the holy ghost began to give me understanding he said what came upon you your body can't carry it it was already wearing you out but I need it. There, there are certain battles I need it for. Move down many years, down maybe three, four, five years, I don't know. I went back to a program in Makodi, my father in law's place. And then a certain minister came and raised that top. That was the day I knew the tangible, the scriptural understanding of what happened to me. And he began to speak about a man being clothed. And as he began to speak, that thing happened there. Come and see people. The man who was still praying, he just carried his Bible. Like this. He snuck out, he snuck out of church and left us. Past the man preaching left us. We were still there. He came the next day again. He started preaching. Then he the man knew the ways of that thing. He orchestrated it the second time. So that, to tell you that it was not by uh, my own type of stumbling. He, when the thing started again, we were still praying, oh, pa Pastor, he, he packed his Bible and snuck out of church and went home and left us. I found out that many people did vigil the first night and did vigil the second night, not because he said, but he brought down a measure. So the second day I was in the car, we were going back home with my father in the Lord. And I said, Daddy, say, please, who is that man? 
I knew his name, but please, who is he? He said, what is the issue? I said, how was he bringing down that thing? Now, I don't know what it is. Then I told my father, that thing he brought, can we keep it? Then my father-in-law said, no. We can't survive it if it stays. We can only wear it once in a while. That's what you will wear in heaven. That's your body. Your, when, they, when heaven implants your... There are times that heaven will give you... You will rent for two minutes your heavenly body. Then you can do things the way you will have done it without sin limiting you. There's a measure like that. But you see that measure cannot stay. Because this body, this flesh is corrupted. The measure will eat it up. It cannot stay with corruption. I don't have time to go to that scripture. Maybe another day. But you see, we need those measures because darkness is much. So for God to give us those kind of measures, he will now tell us to be in one accord. In that period, nobody is distracted. Nobody is thinking about food. Nobody is thinking about marriage, about relationship, about business. Then we are just pushing in one direction. We can bring power. Then we become like, like power rangers, like Voltron. So that when you enter into a place, you don't see Jude, you don't see Fidelis, you don't see AY, you don't see Dan, you don't see my wife, you don't, you don't see us. All you see, you see one man. And you can't recognize the man because the man will be in the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's as if we entered into one entity and we are forming Christ. That one man, principalities fear it. They fear it. They fear it because it is a man orchestrated by power. Therefore, principality will always labor to bring about division in the body. Let me tell you one thing you should always fight. Never be part of a clique in a church. Never, never, never have a clique. Never have preferred people. That's a canker that eats the body. Never have it. Never bring about division. Paul will say, be of one mind. Be the same. Stand together. Love. The reason he's saying it is that we need to form one man. We need to arrive every time. And when we have come to a place, we become one man. That one man has power. There are many times I have prayer points. When I'm at home, I'll do hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it won't go. Hey, it won't go. Then I'll tell myself on Friday. Or I'll tell myself by Sunday. When we gather like this and we are praying, one hour prayer, I'm just looking for any the moment one person and you can pick it all. You are there praying. Then you just pick Nora has joined. Nora is Nora is now part of one man. So you are looking for you know that you need five people. Everybody is just distracted. The moment you strike five in the spirit, you know you have formed something. Hey! You just bring out your sword quickly and you answer the team. And, and the people don't even know. So every time you are distracted in the midst of us, you become a limitation to that accord of power. There, there's something God won't demonstrate with disunity. Listen to me. There is nothing about God in disunity when it comes to the body of Christ. Nothing about God inside it. Nothing. I'm saying this that if Satan gives you an idea that spans this unity, just know that the speakings were not of the testimony of God. It was designed to deplete power. It was designed to waste our capacity. Have you heard when the Bible says, when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be there. How many? Two or what? Or three. When they go to the upper room, I don't want to read that place. Remember that Judas Iscariot had failed. He had fallen. He had committed suicide. They could have just continued life. Peter rose up and said, Ah, hey, we need to fulfill the scripture. Judas Iscariot is gone. Replace him 
And the Holy Ghost never came until he was replaced. If you look at the typology of heaven, there are 12 gates and 12 pillars. So if you miss the completion of your quorum, you can't fulfill something. There was a period that this ministry was stuck. We were laboring, but I knew we were stuck at a level in the spirit. And I began to pray. I was in this place. And I was praying, God, what is it? What is it? What am I getting wrong? What are we getting wrong? And God told me, men, men. And what is what? Say leaders. Say, if you don't set up the next set of leaders, you can't move. I said, ah! So who are the people? And for six months, I was looking for men. Who? Who is this one? Who is this one? Who is this one? And then God will bring. The moment we inaugurated the executive, a, a season shifted in the spirit. Because a quorum was needed for God to do the next move. If the men are not complete, God will wait. So you know what stand does? Let me teach you something. Shall I teach you now? In those seasons, Satan will strike men. Men will start misbehaving. Men, men will misbehave. They will correct. They will fight. They will... The reason is that it's not the men is fighting you. It's the season. And if you are a wise leader too, as they are misbehaving, it is that, it's God that is showing you which one will survive as part of the quorum. Which one sees unity above quarrel? Which one sees purpose above self? Which one and as that thing is happening, that's how you are reading it too. Then by the time it is rounding up, God will now say, this one is this, this one is this, this one is this. And the moment they brought a replacement for Judas Iscariot, chapter 2 of Acts of Apostles 2 happened. Go and read it. The moment they got a replacement for Judas, they were in the upper room and the Holy Ghost came. Zoe stream, there is a measure God will have for you and God has a quorum. You need to labor to get that quorum. Sometimes it's just two people left and you'll be hooked and you'll just be praying. You'll be praying. You'll be praying. You'll be praying. And when you are praying, sometimes that's when you will lose people more. Because that next season has a measure. Can I? Ah, am I distracted? No. It's the Holy Spirit. Every season has labors attached to it. There's a season where God is okay with 30 minutes prayer. So the people who are okay with 30 minutes prayer will be satisfied in that season. The moment you want to move, God will say, I need 15 people with one hour prayer. The person with 30 minutes prayer, if he doesn't move, he won't be part of the next season. Something will happen to remove the person. Something will happen to put the person. That's how they will start arranging themselves like that. Then the next season, you will now see only four people with one hour prayer. Then God will say, I can't move you. Find the rest. You will be on fire, boy. You can't. The power he needs to bring so that he can make something work, it won't come. Because if he brings it on the five people, they will break down. There's a kind of burden and labor God will put on you that you can break down. So when God looks at you, he will tell you, go and find somebody. I can't tell you how many things on ground now that spirit life is supposed to have started. But you see, the measures of the quorum of men must be rich. And it is not about number. It's first about the quality of men before a number of men. Yes. He's not looking for 32,000 men. He's looking for 300 men who know how to drink water. If he gets 300 that can drink water accurately, he will do more with them than 32,000 which with some that can drink accurately and some that cannot drink accurately. There's a unity. Every one of us will now say, I'm a part of the body, I'm part of a vision, I'm part of an assignment and for the power of God to move in so-so measure, we need to get it like this. I've used church for example. Can I tell you something? There's something God has told you. Told you, told you, told you, told you. Something God has laid inside your spirit. The measure of power that we enforce that thing to work, you cannot do it. You must find men. Let me give you an example. Maybe a simple kind example. If God tells you to open a school, can you open a school alone? Will you be head teacher, cleaner, mass teacher? Do you realize you cannot? It, it means that there has to be men. And if it is God that sent you, 
You can't bring a herbalist to teach because they are looking for men. Or you bring an atheist to come and teach. So some of you, the reason why some of your visions are hanging is that you have not prayed for the men that will come in. One of the things you must pray for to fulfill destiny is that you must pray for men. The problem of a great man is not resources. The problem of a great man is men. What do you think is the problem of a man like um, Dadade Boy? Money? No. Anointing? No. Influence? No. His problem will be men. Just men. God will tell him things, then he will look around. And he can't find a man. Can you make a prayer in a minute or two and say, God, give me the wisdom to source men for my destiny. Because that spiritual thing that you carry may be crying out for men, men, it's not crying for another measure of anointing or mantle. It's crying for men. Maybe you lost one Judas Iscariot. Ah, there were 120 in the upper room. You can get alignment to choose which one amongst them will be sufficient for you to fulfill what God said. Just in a minute, pray for yourself. I feel an opening for us to make another prayer. Pray for yourself first. Your calling, your gifting, your assignment, your career, your business. That one that God gave you a testimony about. The wisdom for the men. Sometimes what you need is capacity to be able to fight for those men to be released so that they can serve. that do not lose men. Jesus said, all that the Father has given me, I have lost none except the son of perdition. That I will not lose anyone. If anyone is giving me and is not with me, it's because that one chose to leave, not because I chose to lose. Thank God. Ah. In the name of Jesus, can we rise on our feet? I want us to pray for spirit life. I just sense it now. What we are going to ask God for spirit life is quality men with quantity. So quality many men. Quality many men. Men, men that are, will be sold out, that will, will, will say, I know I am the blue one, but I will fuse in so that we will become a, a, a range of whatever is it power rangers or Volta will become an entity in God. Can you raise a cry for men? Please raise that chant that you are singing. Kapalaite Komelameana. Five minutes. You are in a department, you know you need hands. There's so much God is saying, but what we are looking for is laborers. Kapalai kapambre kapelata kaya vanate. Afa kamba kapala bra kapala taila kapratania taba. It's so that the testimony of God over us as a ministry will not be surcharged by the lack of hands of laborers. Can you raise a cry? We cry to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. Let our sons and daughters, for which God has ordained, for the workings of his power and of his goodwill, be released and be brought in. A summon to the waters. Is a summon to the waters. Kapata kapelata kaila komba. 
abraka baska bande baka baladia arabam braka balaska pai pai ai okay la vacane abarata baronda kai kai komo abraka balam braka balatamba kai abreketos kevelatu kai aramba babaska ba man of skill man of the holy ghost man of resources man of service man that will bear the yoke we are for true yoke fellows akaboy alando kali korondo sotai akanyo sasai And we are seeking for men with alignment. Can you bring us laborers? Laborers, laborers, genuine hearts, laborers. Pakala sumeata, not men of yourself. Men that will come in one accord with the things that you have uttered. We need men for evangelism. We need men for prayers. We need men to worship. We need men for the world. We need men for the drama. We need men for the media. Arise! We need men with finances. Saka banatina. Men that are gifted by the Spirit, men that are furnished by the Holy Ghost, men that are sold out for Jesus, men that Babylon cannot buy, that Jezebel cannot corrupt, men that will insist on the will of God. Kapanaika sande barata ilatona, men that will burn their knives on their knees to beg the counsel of God. That will give their skill. Men that will say what God has said will not suffer in my hand. Send us helpers. Send us laborers. Send us partners. Kalia Komo Saketa. Men of one mind. Men that will be in one accord. Men that will seek hope. Holiness, men that will run after righteousness, men that will walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Hey! Send us intercessors, send us prophets, send us apostles, send us pastors, send us teachers, send us mistresses. I like open attire. Let men like Jesus. Sons of consolation come in our midst. Even though that are far, that you will bring a man from a far country to execute your counsel. Man whose money will be used to propagate the will of God.
can have your seat. Father, we thank you for you are the God that answers prayers. Thank you. Meanwhile, before we advance, who sensed when we began to forge into one person? If you, if you picked when mommy blew that thing, we're, we're beginning to unite to make a single sound. Meanwhile, it was when we were singing that I now remembered the dream I told you that I was called and told about. Somebody called me yesterday and asked me for Gaius's number. And the person had had a vision with Gaius and Gaius was chanting like he does. But every time Gaius chants, the person is carried up in the spirit. And then she saw herself wearing a wedding gown. And it was bright. Meanwhile, she knew that the wedding gown was not about her because she's married. That it was about the church. So we began to pray on them. She was just calling him to encourage him and tell him, do what you are doing, keep doing it. This is what happens to the body of Christ when you do it. Only for her to stumble on my wife's status. And then she saw our Rema meditation devotional. And the devotional was a bride, a bride adorned. And she said she almost screamed from where she was. So that was why she now called me too. I said, that thing you are doing, how are you doing it? I said, what? I said, we've been doing it for a while. He said, ah, I just stumbled on it. And the thing that you sent out was what God was doing in the moment. And so, encourage me also. But while we were singing, as I was trying to sing, and I remembered the person's vision, and I was sensing the fulfillment of part of it already. See, God is, is intentional about what he's doing with us. So you have to be intentional about your relationship with him. Meanwhile, the person has never attended spirit life physically. Just follows online. So the text that we have been using, we stopped at one accord. I think we've done a little practical about one accord. You can study it. Second, first Corinthians 2. Four to five. Ah, my time half. Jesus, help me. Are we there? First Corinthians two, verse four to five. I want to just refresh it because I was continuing from yesterday, so that we advance. Media, okay. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Next verse. This is where we are continuing today. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in what? The power of God. Can you help me with that scripture to be there for a while? Faith is what you have as a believer for transaction with God. If you find Okay, let me say this, please. In this period, I'm trying to do like three things at the same time. So I'm, I'm a bit not knowing. I'm just going as the Holy Ghost lead me. I'm trying to show you what a spiritual thing is. That's one. I'm trying to show you the signs of being a victim of a wrong spiritual thing. So I'll show you the correct spiritual thing. Signs of being a victim. And I'm also trying to teach you how that if you get an accurate spiritual thing, how to hold it and how to transmit it. So as I talk, you'll find me flipping between what the spiritual thing is what the false spiritual thing is and how you can get a spiritual thing sustain it and then use it to bless others is that okay i'm saying that so that you can understand how i'm flipping the teaching that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of god if you become a victim of someone that does not have an accurate spiritual thing your faith in god is going to stand on the wisdom that man brought It means that when you go out to live your life as a Christian, your foundation will be in the words of the man. The man said, God loves you. So you went out. 
and what you were living your life on was God love you. But when he said God love you, the testimony that echoed when he said it was not God. That means that you will be building your faith on falsehood. And that's unreasonable. That's wicked to people. It's like giving you a vest like this one and telling you that what I gave you is a bulletproof. You can go and face Boko Haram. When did Boko Haram shoot you? How do you give men a faith that stands on the wisdom of men when you know that when they go out there, they are going to meet the God of this world? They are going to meet principalities and power. They are going to contend with spiritual wickedness in high places. And they are supposed to have a shield, a faith, by which they will defend their lives. And what you gave them was nylon, nylon. And you told them it was bulletproof. So when they now go out and you, they shoot them and it enter, they will come back to service. You know, hmm, may God help us pastors. Even when you are lying, your members will sit down and be looking at you. If a pastor is lying, do you raise hand and tell him, oh, God, you are lying? I don't know times pastor is saying something, you don't agree with it, but you just sit down and be looking at him. Uh -huh. you, that your members are listening does not mean they believe you. Mm -hmm. That's another lesson for another day. Meanwhile, you, the, 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 this genuine or sincere believer comes to church and then he sits down under a false teacher. Janice and Jambres or whichever one. And then Janice and Jambres gives him nylon. He goes to the office with the nylon boldly. Then he speaks to his boss and he enters trouble. For example, there was this young man that was praying in my school, praying at night in the in the class. And the security man walked up to him and said, You are in the class, you are making noise, people are reading. If you want to pray, you can't pray here, get somewhere else. You know what he told the security man? The heavens and the earth belongs to my father. Security man said, Eh? He does what? Isn't that in the Bible that the heavens are there belongs to God? And God is his father. But is that thing he was holding was nylon? <laughs> it was not the real thing. The security man bungled the matter. Took it to the authority. Because of that very case, they pursued all church fellowships, those small, small fellowships that were holding. They pursued all of them from campus and left only FCS, Nifes, and Chapel. Just that guy's mistake everybody suffered before you will go to this class you will see living faith you will see redeem everybody was holding their fellowship JJ, until a guy that has sat under someone who didn't give him the real thing opened his mouth and his faith was in the wisdom of men so he met a man too that knew what to do the reason why many people have run away from church is that they came the first day, they gave them nylon. They went to their village, the witch dealt with them. They came back the next Sunday, they gave them nylon. They went back to office, they dealt with them. They came back again, they gave them nylon. They went to business, business dealt with them. Then all of a sudden, Satan whispers, is that church thing even real at all? Could it be that uh, you are wasting your time? Do you know how many people feel that church is now the business of a pastor? How do you think they got there? They attended church long enough. They did some observations. And if you ask them, they will give you facts. Correct facts. Because the preaching they received. I have been in churches where they steal money and eat. It didn't change my faith in God. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? If, if because you heard that uh, they came and read, what they call that thing? Financial report. They read financial reports. And then, me, when, they, when I was still in my local assembly, I don't read that thing. I'm not saying what they are doing is wrong. Financial report is not wrong. But for me, I feel it is abominable for me as a member to come and collect a report and find out what church is doing with money. How do I? It's like giving you money and then coming to follow you to find out what you did. I gave you money as a gift. Why should I follow you to find out what you did with the money? If I gave the money to God, I'm not saying, eh, 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 eh. 
my money that I gave, what did you people do? You didn't give the money. You were, test, you were testing them. That offering you put, you were testing them. That, that's my own belief system. So even if you give me that thing, I will just pass it to the next person. I've given it to God. If the pastor chose to steal the money, Baba knows how to handle Nada Banabihu. It's his key. It's, his, it's not my own. My own go to God. You can't steal my own. When I was going to put my offering, I was not giving pastor. I was not giving church. I know that my money gets to God. Even if you stole the paper, my own got to where? There's a testimony about giving that I have. So when people have received a wrong testimony that is not God, what happens is that they, they begin to find failure in the wisdom of men that was given. You, you have to be intentional that you will not offer men the wisdom of men for them to go and use and fight ancestral battles, societal battles. But don't do it. Find what works in God. Find it. Find a testimony. Find it. Before you lead a prayer, find it. Before you preach, find it. All that Jesus began both to do and to teach. This thing I'm teaching you, if, I'm, if my memory serves me right, I think I studied it like six, seven years ago. It's hard for me to ever teach you what I studied this year or last year. It's hard. God, God will have to be telling me, but it's, it's hard. I won't do it. I will hold it for like four years. I, I will test it. I will, I, I will find it out. That's why sometimes when I'm talking, I will tell you the loopholes and what is remaining. Because I don't know everything, but as far as I've pushed this thing for three, four years, I can tell you how to test spiritual things. I, I did it so much that I practice on TV. That if I put the TV station, give me three minutes, I'll tell you, change it. Ch change it, it's not God. Then in the other, say, you everything, you say, it's not God, everything. I, I kept quiet. Then you will use two years of your life. Then I said, ah, it's like that thing you said. I didn't want to be wasting two years of my life. So at least after four or five years, I can tell you, a little, a little, I, I'm still learning, no, but a little about a spiritual thing. Find a real thing. Find it. Work it out. When you work it out three, four times and you are not stumbling, you can come and orchestrate and God will show up and you work out. Then you come back and you orchestrate and God will show up. By the time you do it like five times, you now say, if you want God to move, then you now open scriptures. Because anything that is true about the testimony of God has its root in the scriptures. If you can't find the scriptures that gives you clarity to that thing, leave it first. It may be correct, but you are not ready. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, a word is established. And that witness is not your friend or your neighbor. It's the Bible. The reason I'm saying you should find it accurately is that when you are going to meet people and what you have is a spiritual thing and at this point you, you have demonstration of the spirit and you have power. You need to be intentional about the fact that their faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. You can remove it now. Your intentionality is because the people you talk to may be victims of something else. I, I, I'm believing God that in this period I will pick a few few spirits in the end time that are, are giving testimony even in church. The first one I want to write it down. Seducing spirits. Give me First Timothy 4 verse 1. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Now, the Spirit, that's Holy Spirit, the Spirit speaketh clearly, expressly, that in the latter times, some shall what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing 
spirits. Please look up. I want to stop there. We'll come. That one is another topic. Doctrine of devils. Another topic. That those guys you are seeing, they are in the faith. They are not unbelievers. They found a true God. But in the end time, there is going to be an influx of seducing spirit. And what the seducing spirits are going to do is that it's going to make some people depart from the faith. What it does is that it lures. So, what you believe is God. And then the seducing spirit starts my father in the Lord calls it angular shift. You know what? Angular what? Shift. If I stand here and this is how I'm supposed to go, it's simple. If I take 20 degrees to this direction, if I take one step, you may not know that I have shifted away from the center. Let's say one step is one month. Then I take one more step. Two months. Sometimes maybe around the third month. I'm like, sometimes it can take you three years on an angular shift to find out that you have departed from the faith. Seducing spirits are ah, okay. Let me use that my example. I used one time. Do you know those rats that eat people's leg in boarding school? That's how seducing spirits are. They do they don't hurt, they lure. They, they have something to give you, something to give you, something. There's something small. A seducing spirit doesn't take away the whole truth. It, it gives you small poison. Small. It kills you installmentally. Do you understand installmental payment? Yes. A seducing spirit will not come and carry sniper and pour inside you. No. It will pour one drop, one drop, one drop, one drop, one drop, one drop. Exodus 32. Verse 1. Ah, my time. Jesus, I need to arrive. Help me in Jesus' name. Exodus 32 from verse 1. I'll read verse 1 and pick something. Now, the story is when uh, Moses had gone up to the mountain to meet with God and bring the commandments. In that story, the Israelites are with God. They are all for God. They, are, they belong to God. He just went to bring a commandment for them. And when Mo the people saw Okay, these are the signs if you are a victim of the teachings of a seducing spirit. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mount, when they saw that Moses did what? Delayed. A man that has sat under a seducing spirit sees God's waiting process as delay. He has no capacity to wait for process. The pastor is not telling you. He's just preaching, preaching, preaching. But after listening to him for six months, guess what you believe? I must prosper now. When is my prosperity? You're not answering me. You will understand it. Say, I, I must appear. It's my turn to shine. Today is my turn. It must be. It is. Somehow you lose ability to wait. When God is trying to make patterns for your life, you can't wait. Say, stay, stay, stay. No, you are still praying. No, come pray. Which can you are? You are in the room. Pray. No, go out. Go out and get something. Get, get something. Something that makes you unable. Every the teachings of a seducing spirit withdraws waiting capacity. You can't wait for God. You know what seduction is in the physical? The, the guy is destined to marry and to sleep with his wife. But something says sleep now. Sleep with a woman now. Lo lust is a craving to fulfill something somewhat legitimate but fulfill it now before the appropriate time. You lose waiting. Ha have you seen our generation? This is one of the major killers. Why do you think we have the old boys? Seducing spirits. You can't wait for when God will. You want to, you, I, I must, I, I must. And I, I like how God does. One of the ways you will know that you are not a victim of this thing is that God will come to you and say, I have made you rich. 
Yeah, more, six months later, you are poorer than he said it. Then, but you find out that even though six months later, you are still not rich, you still believe God. You are still working with God. It means that they said, this spirit has not held you. A man said, this spirits have held. When God said, I have made you rich, two weeks later, he can be angry with God. Two weeks, two weeks. He can't be like Abraham that God will say, I have made you a father of nations and then for 24 years you still don't have a child but you are believing God. And the Bible says, and Abraham never wavered in faith. So said, this spirit withdraw waiting capacity from men. The pastor won't tell you I'm withdrawing waiting capacity. It's just that after you have listened to him, you will realize you don't know how to wait. Everything is now, now, now. So, when they saw that Moses had delayed to come down from the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Aaron is that preacher that uh, sedition spirits can use easily. And said unto him, Up! Make us gods who shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. Somebody met one of my daughters and said, are you still going to that ministry? Can you not see? Then the person began to point out, this person has not prospered. This person has not prospered. You see, when you have listened to seducing spirits, somebody met one of my daughters and said, are you still attending that place? You, there's no husband there for you to marry you. Straight. Then the person co-opted and got married. So my daughter attended the wedding and she did them shakara with the... You see, you see. I don't know if it was up to one month or two months in the marriage. The husband packed and went back to the house and left her alone in the house. As it is now, I think they don't know where she is. It's not up to one year in the marriage. You have lost ability to... The person, for the person to tell my daughter that in that place you won't find a husband, it means the person has scouted. You think it's everybody that comes here is a member? Some came on scouting. Then they will come, on, come and check and say, Ah, ah, I, I saw five, I saw some girls, some girls are there. <laughs> Let me go again and check if I can find the marriage material. Then he gets a problem. Then when he comes, he finds all of them. He come on, cuckoo, kai. Then he tells himself, this one is not the type we are looking for. We will not be praying every time. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, Fielo, vina. So, someone walked in to this place and was a gay. And why a, a, a young man was ministering on the altar? He was looking for a number to send and say, I like you. Gay, gay. I know if we used to count members, some of us left long ago. <laughs> and, but before the person came, I told my wife, God is talking to me about, he's talking to me about, how come I'll be hearing so much about this kind of spirit for long? So when they told me, I said, aha! That means we need to raise altar here. Altar, altar. You cannot help me. Can I didn't say anything, no, but it didn't show up again. Either you repent or you leave. Choose one. You need to be aware. You, do you know what people are going through? And you want to offer him what cannot deliver him from a seducing spirit. Yes, back when we were in that class, when we began in that class, a woman meandered in there after the meeting. She, when they talk, she said, hey, hey. You know those active people inside church? After service, she met me and my wife. Hey, I don't have money for food. It's not every time people are lying that you worry. So we gave her some money. So fast forward some years back later, my wife was trying to buy something. She didn't recognize my wife was there. And she was just with other people. And my wife recognized her. She said, ah, it's not church. I go from one to another. When I just go, I'll just tell them, you know, when you meet the pastor, tell him you are broke. Eh, he will give you something. That that's what she does from church. Hey, 
Aaron. Aaron is that pastor that used to do that. Thing. People can tell Aaron, we are tired of the way you are preaching like this. Change message. Aaron will stand up and change a message. A man of God packed from one state where he was to another state. When he got to the other state, his messages were not the same again. Something had changed. So he himself now said that you know when you come to a city like Abuja, there are technocrats. You need to teach the kind of thing that will go with them. Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. That's what I'm saying. Aaron, Aaron. Aaron will look at the members and say, Ah, oh, there are wealthy people today. You will prosper. The power of seed sowing. The, the reason he's preaching that in God, it's all a testimony of God. The members told him what to preach. A pastor was talking to me one on one. And he said, and he, the pastor was on fire until when he moved to that one certain place. So he was not telling him, say, say, if you move to a place like this, the people there are intellectuals. So you need to find an intellectual. So the, the, the preaching was not a testimony of God. It was not intellectual service. May you not be a wrong. May you not sing because people like a song. May you have a testimony. So, Aaron, go before us. Say, uh, say, we don't know what has happened to this man, Moses. That, that, that the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. We want not what is become of him. We, we can't be patient. Do you know how long? Just 40 days. It was not even 40 days yet by this time. Just 30 something days. Pastor is not around. You don't attend church again. Say, Pastor, it's not around. Eh? In short, some of you can even call. Is Daddy around? Say yes. I saw a fly. I saw a fly that is going to preach somewhere. I saw the date. That means he will not be around. Let's go somewhere else. You people are the one that used to make ministers become Aaron. Eh? Uh, you think we don't know? Some of us used to be afraid of posting flyer. Because the moment member just see the fly, say, hey, Papa will be around this day. Then he start guessing who is going to preach self now. Uh, is he mommy? Is he Sam? Is he... Yeah, I'm looking. Mommy preached the other time. So, it's Sam. <laughs> Sam likes shouting or not. He used to shout. I'm not, I don't have time for Sam to shout on me today. Let me just rest today. Do I talk like I'm talking? One person asked, am I talking like I'm talking? Can you also decide? Some of the people that became preachers with seducing spirits did it because of members. Members pressured them. Make us a God. You, you even went and, and, and downloaded message. Then you probably say, man of God, man of God. See the way this pastor preached. He just used to say, you know the Lord God Almighty. If you preach like that, people will come. People will come. I will even call my friends to come. You are, you are telling pastor that he should make gods for you. May we become a generation that cannot be bought. Amen. That no man will pressure you out of the testimony of God that is upon your spirit. In that same verse 1, let me show you the second sign of what seducing spirits do to you. He said, And he said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. Make us gods. Yahweh was not absent. Jehovah was still with them. But they needed something physical. A man who is a victim of a seducing spirit cannot hold faith. He walks by sight. God, you say, you say, I'm going to be rich. Where is the money? Where is the money? But the testimony is alive on your spirit. But you are still saying, no. Show me first. This kind of people are the people that do see and believe. Do what? See and believe like Babalao. The more you see. In the kingdom, we don't do see and believe. In the kingdom, we believe and see. We believe, therefore, we speak. The root of our action is belief. 
It's not that we hold money, then we say we are rich. We are rich by the testimony of God before we hold money. So if you are waiting to have money, if you have so been indoctrinated by seducing spirits, that it is only when you hold something physical that you think you have it, know that a seducing spirit has worked on you. You are supposed to be able to walk by faith. But seducing spirits pull you out of that reality. Help me with verse 2. I need to jump. Verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are on the ears of your wives, of, of your sons and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Verse 3. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. Jump to verse 6. After they had made it, let me show you the major sign of these people. As I'm telling you, be checking yourself. Are you hearing me? If you find that sign, it means you have given heed to a seducing spirit before. What you just need to do will get there by God's grace. Ah! I have 15 minutes. It's 7 o'clock. Jesus. And they rose up early in the morning on the morrow and offered offerings and brought peace offerings. See the shape of a man under seducing spirit. The people sat down to eat and to drink. When they sit down to discuss, what they do is eating and drinking. Pleasure. Me, I know, go suffer. Something has touched you. I didn't come to this world to suffer. I, I need to eat and to drink and to enjoy myself. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we shall die. Somebody say, why are you keeping money? Eat, wake up and enjoy. You, the only thing you sit down and plan is how to eat. It's pleasure, pleasure. Pleasure. And in case you rise up from your sitting position, what do you now do? That play there is not football, though. Because by the time Moses came back, they were naked. They were fulfilling their lusts. Anything you feel like, says your life. They taught you how to make money, but they didn't tell you the purpose of money. They taught you how to get promotion, but they didn't give you the purpose of the promotion. It's a life that gives you things without purpose. That's what seducing spirit do. They give you access to everything. When you rise up, people arise, say, arise from thy sleep. Awake thou that slumbers. He said, walk circumspectly. When you arise as an accurate believer, you arise to war and to fulfill purpose. But a man that has a seducing spirit, anytime he rises, the effect is play. When they promote him, not the next thing he's thinking about, the next car, the next house, the next clothes. All he thinks about is his pleasure. Every rising in his life increases pleasure. Is it possible that God will promote you and you still live the way you live? Because the promotion was to bring you influence, to bring you resources, to bring you access for the kingdom so that the kingdom can profit. But these guys, when they rise, they play. Can you see how Christians are? Do you know the kind of wealthy Christians we have in Nigeria? In the Acts of Apostles chapter 2, chapter 3, if they had this kind of wealthy Christians, there would even be a problem that food was not reaching some people. No, there won't be a problem. A man of God stood one time on the altar and said, our problem now is that we, it's not that we don't have gold. Our problem is that what do we do with it? Have you seen churches that they carry off with bullion van? But Christians are dying in the north. We don't care again. We just rise up to play. Everything God gives you increases your capacity for pleasure. That's a seducing spirit. Uh, uh, 
Oh, then you find a man that he changes car every six, six months. He's a victim of a seducing spirit. If he's driving like this and he sees another car, he will just call his mechanic, put my car on sale, and find out how much you buy this other one. He, he has found the next car to buy. He said he's a victim. That's how Christian, wealthy, influential, anointed. And do you know what? It has gone beyond just money. Oh. So streams, can I say something that will help people? Because you, you're, you're, you guys, your ministry is so important, but Stan has finished many things. Many music ministers in Nigeria are victims of seducing spirits. Every time they sing, they are able to program it for their personal pleasure, not the kingdom. So the, God will still use them because there's an anointing. But go and ask the outcome of it. And I don't blame them. You need to ask the pastors that disciple them too. Because if people like Daddy Bile, Daddy Kumui, and you sat down well under their discipleship, even when God promotes you, we may not know. We may not even know that something has been added to you. Because there's a discipline around your life that can regulate what comes. You don't rise up to play. You don't rise in that anointing to play. You don't rise in influence to play. But when a seducing spirit has done that, this is the outcome. Let me show you the, the, the product of a seducing spirit member. Give me verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get down for thy people. At this point, God is denying his own children. Thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have what? Corruption. Do you, do you see how Nigeria got to where we are? Why you are complaining that people are corrupt? God is telling that the root cause was that there was a minister that ministered by seducing spirits. If someone I know, not really a friend that I know, was sharing with me. They had been in office, it's a private school. They had been working for six months without salary. How many months? In a private school. It got so bad that the owner of the school took her land and gave the teachers and told them, sell the land. When the money comes, share among yourselves. That man was in church on Sunday. He saw his proprietress. Came out. Hallelujah! I have a testimony. God has been doing wonderful in my life. Money has been coming in. This has been happening. He said he was confused. Is it that this woman has money and will not pay us or she's lying to the church? You see, the thing the church wants to hear as testimony is money. Do you know why? When people give testimony of money and you, it does you like this, it's a sign of a seducing spirit. The last time somebody gave testimony, I was able to pray one hour. You just looked at him. Uh -huh. Me, didn't I pray one hour? Uh, for you, the prayer is not a testimony. It's the money. Well, how did we get there? Said, this is spirit. My mother had a tenant. A tenant that was not able to pay for rent. I don't want to tell you the amount. You want to cry. Was not able to pay for rent for long. And the person was about to be sent out. The person went to church on Sunday. He was still in the congregation. Right from the altar. The pastor called his name. God forbid. He said, Reuben, stand up. And then he stood up. He said, look at Reuben. He came to Abuja six months ago. He had nothing battered, shattered, rattled. He was a tenant, but now God has given him his house. His wife was there. His wife was teaching in my mother's school. The wife looked at her husband. The husband looked at the wife. Two of them were wondering, where did we build house that? They came back home and met my mother and said, we don't understand though. We have entered a church, church, church. If I mention name, I will be in trouble. Because you will know the name. All of you will know the name. He came back home confused. His pastor was using him. Meanwhile, the pastor had promised him they would give him money for rent. He had even told my mother. But the pastor had not given him the money. But the pastor was telling the church that since he attended this commission, since he came to this commission, is it your commission that commissions men to destiny or Jesus? Can we not have a testimony in the name of God? Yes, 
Yes, God will use a place, acknowledge it. God will use a man, acknowledge it. And it is wise to do so. But, must you lie to people that since he joined this commission? That's how the man left that church. Because from such, what should you do? Turn away. How can you use me to lie to a church when I don't even know what is happening? So the pastor now looks like Aaron. They have corrupted themselves. They cannot wait again. You see, when the people are corrupted, there, there is a language that the preacher needs to come with if he will command deliverance to such men. The Bible says when Moses came down, he told Aaron, what is this thing that you have done? And Aaron said, this is not these people. They pushed me and told me I should make. And you, you allow them to push you. In the day of trouble, you too, you will be in trouble. And he said, how can you see that? The Bible says Moses took the golden calf and he set it on fire. The language that shuts down a seducing spirit is fire. That means if you meet men who have become victims of a seducing spirit, you will go back and secure a testimony in God. And the testimony you are going to be looking for is fire. Because that was the same language that Elijah had to look for. Why? Israel had come to a point they were not sure whether it is Yahweh that is God or Baal that is God. Because the moment a person is corrupted, he begins to walk with two understandings. He is seduced. He can, he can be here, he can be there. He can be here, he can be there. He can be here, he can be there. And the punishment that the seducing spirit puts upon a man is that a man becomes a vagabond. What the seducing spirit does to you is that it withdraws purpose from Aaron. Instead of leading them to God, Aaron can lead them to idols and tomorrow lead them to God. And the people become wanderers. Ah, can you give me First Timothy? My time, I'm looking at time. First Timothy 4 and verse 1. First Timothy 4 1. Now, the spirit speaker expertly that in the latter day some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirits. If you have a lexicon and you look at seducing there, it means wandering, it means misleading, it means leading into error, it means tramp. Jesus, help me. The word tramp implies to be aimlessly moving about I need to show you this sign because this is what is destroying many youths in our generation they become victims of say, have you seen people they play keyboard in this church on Sunday then play keyboard in this church then play drum in this church then they attend this church for three weeks then they are part of this church for six months and then they are in this church for three months and then they are in this church for two years they are wandering about it's because a seducing, a wandering spirit has been able to testify into them. They love God. They like God. They want to serve God. But when they enter a place, in less than six months, they can't stay because there is a wandering testimony that says, wander about. And then they move to another church. Then they serve there for like three months. And the thing we say what again? Wander about. Uh, the reason was that they sat down under a room. They sat down under a man with a seducing spirit so they didn't have staying power. That ability to wait until God does what he wants, they have a restlessness. Today the guy is an apostle, tomorrow is a teacher, tomorrow is a prophet, tomorrow is a pastor, tomorrow is an ambassador, tomorrow is a senior prophet. He cannot even find his purpose, he's just wandering. Tomorrow he's in this choir. Tomorrow he's in that choir. Next tomorrow is a seducing spirit that he's listening to. He's not aware. And as long as fire does not come to purge men, men will keep wandering about. And if you wonder about, you can't fulfill purpose. Why should something be committed to a wanderer? Do you know who was first called a wanderer? Cain. That you will move about and not be able to fulfill anything with your life. Why? A seducing spirit. What does it do? It gives you an angular shift. Today you just look at this church and you don't know why you start going to this one. Then before you finish going to this one, you don't know why you start going to this one. You are going to rise on your feet. You want to cry for fire. Because Elijah said, he knows, listen to me, a seducing spirit operates with fire. That's why a man burns with lust. 
The golden calf was made inside fire. The prophets of Baal knew how to call fire. That was why when Elijah said, let us call down fire, they agreed. Because that's the language of a seducing spirit. It has a kind of fire, but it's a corrupted fire. The kind of fire, not that but a bee who brings to the altar. And when you want to fix that fire, the Bible says when Adnabab and Abihu brought a strange fire, God sent another fire. When they made the golden calf in a fire, Moses burnt the golden calf in a fire. When the prophets of Baal came that they wanted to call fire, what did Elijah do? He called fire also. That's how you attend to a seducing spirit. And do you know what happens? Many times when the fire comes upon you because of a seducing spirit, you know somebody says, I don't like this place, I don't like this place. It's the seducing spirit that is making you run away. Can you stay until everything burns? Can you rise on your feet? There are the deposits of a seducing spirit that I heard without knowing. Or maybe I followed or I entertained that has been making me wonder. I wonder in relationship. I wonder in business. I wonder in service. I wonder in calling. I wonder in church. I've not been able to say this is it. I will live and die doing this. Can you raise a cry and tell God, uproot, burn. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost, I burn. Everywhere, oh, oh, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, burn. That's our cry tonight. Oh, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, burn. Everywhere, oh, oh, fire, Holy Ghost, fire, burn, burn, burn. Send us fire. Send us fire. I cannot be a victim of a seducing spirit. I need something that is not corrupted.
Jesus fire fire bono bono na wa onta bono na wa onta bono 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 let your fire fire bono 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 we burn the works of satisfying spirits. In our territory, born, 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 Home. Are you hearing me? Just keep speaking in tongues like that. I'll tell you something. This spirit is very, very masquerading. We are online. There are some things I can't say. You, you, you don't know how much contention as a minister you have to do so that this don't happen. Because some people will innocently think they are giving you suggestion, but. They don't even know themselves that it is a seducing spirit that wants them to make you make an idol for them. And sometimes you have to fight to say, no, I will not make an idol for the people. It's a war every genuine minister fights not to become a victim of the crowd. That the crowd will not determine how you do and how you live. But you'll be the testimony behind. There is something else I didn't tell you about dealing with it. It's called water. When Moses burned the golden calf, he poured it into water. When Elijah was going to deal with his own calves and the mountain between him and the prophets of Baal, which were the prophets of Jezebel, who is the mother of water and seducing spirits, what he did was that he told them, pour water on my own sacrifice. What does he imply? You need to sit under a genuine word of God to wash you and wash you while the fire sits on you as a refiner's fire. So it's not just the fire you sense now upon your spirit that you need. You need to sit down under a genuine teaching and then you to start washing out those things. Then all of a sudden you now realize that if God gives you a promise and it takes 20 years, he will find you 20 years active and waiting. He said, when I return, will I find faith? Just 40 days and people couldn't wait. Yes, back my wife looked at me and asked me, when God tells you something and it doesn't happen, how do you handle it? I say, hey, I believe him for more. But if you're a victim of seducing spirits, when God tells you something and it does not happen, you become depressed. That's a sign. Your faith dies, you become depressed and confused. But God, you say, God, you say, God, you say, God, when you come out of a seducing spirit, you know when God speaks his words are eternal. The Bible says, and this all died in faith, not having received a physical thing, but they had a substance, and when they were dying, the Bible said they were believing as they went to their grave. I mean, they were buried, they didn't receive it physically, but they had a testimony, 
and it was enough and it was by that substance that they had a good report you can come out of it all these gods said after three weeks you are, you are worried you are confused who told you you should be can you tell God wash me by the word fire judges Jezebel but you need water to wash you you need the word wash me by your word let me go back to the scriptures in alignment again oh if I remember can you tell God the seducing spirits will not use me to manipulate my department to not use me to manipulate my pastor and if you're a minister, I will not make idols for God's people. I will not make idols for them. I won't be their idol. And I will not make idols for them. But at the end of the day, they will come in alignment with the testimony of God and not with my desires. But tonight, don't forget, just when you lay on your bed, just mutter in tongues and tell God, flush away the things that seducing spirits have put. You are not a vagabond and you will not be one. You can't wonder.